Hey, welcome back to the Dwarf Mattress uh, Save Swap playthrough. This is turn one. Uh, this is the first season we've set up on the previous episode, and now we've embarked. Uh, I'm recording all this post-commentary because I had audio issues when I recorded uh, the initial season, so uh, if I'm referring to things in past tense, it's because they happened in the past. Um, I initially embarked here. I was worried about... I'd selected this place with the road, and I didn't know if the road had a functional quality as well as an aesthetic one. I mean, obviously, the road's made of a certain material, uh, but I didn't know if, you know, there was programming that allowed for more bandits or more invasive parties to show up. But it's too late at this point, so looking around, uh, checking out the brook here, the, uh, I think, Mists of Rage was called, and uh, realizing that I picked a very flat area of plenty of trees, plenty of shrubbery, which are all all good things and uh, it, it, a slightly elevated area to the left over here but not uh, not terribly interesting terrain wise uh, a couple of little ponds looked around for a bit and then uh, I thought about maybe burrowing straight down uh, just over on the right side just to have more room but after kind of looking at it I realized you know the left side has plenty of room and we can always burrow down and then to the right later on the right side of the road if we wanted to, so I gave up the idea of burrowing just a hole down into the ground. I decided I like to burrow into the hillside a bit. An interesting thing to note about this party is this composed entirely of females, uh, which I may have already mentioned, but I thought it was weird. I've only played through a couple of times, but it seemed bizarre to me. It may not be that uncommon, really. Uh, so eventually, after deciding you know where to burrow, it's time to start digging did that I decided uh, because I've heard that uh, a trading party needs uh, at least th a three wide space to move through decided the initial entrance hall would be that wide and decided I'd put the trading post in that area and I had already kind of decided maybe a f indoor farm near the entrance uh, at least for starters maybe move it indoors or down uh, a few levels later but for now I uh, work you know near the front entrance uh, and then, of course, it's time to start chopping down trees so we can have a wood supply for things like uh, beds and, and uh, I, I don't know, other things I suppose that we might need wood for, uh, weapons, things like that. Uh, hopefully, there are enough trees in the area that they'll replenish faster than we can use them, but I suppose that remains to be seen. Uh, also, collecting uh, plants is important early on for a quick food supply and uh, to give us materials to brew. Because these, uh, these guys, they have to have their, their alcohol be happy and content and then um, of course we need a wood stockpile let's go ahead and set that up and uh, a refuse pile so they don't just leave trash and corpses and things lying around uh, as I mentioned we're gonna do the indoor farm area near the entrance so I went ahead and designated that uh, room for carving out obviously we'll need room for our uh, supplies and and things we've created things like that so I decided uh, down one level from the first level here, so that we would build like a giant. I, I guess I was thinking of an area with workshops and uh, most of our workshops, and also like a large stockpile room. So I kind of went ahead and designated an area for the stockpile and a few little rooms for starter workshops. Things we'll need like a carpenter's workshop and a stonemason's shop. Um, and but a lot of it's still kind of loose. I'm kind of playing with ideas obviously uh, but that's the basic kind of thing I had had in mind at the time um, not you know planning uh, architecture not always my strong suit uh, at this point especially because I'm I'm still wrestling with the interface and uh, basic dwarf management I'm just worried more about uh, these dwarves surviving their first season than uh, with what what layout the rooms is in um, I don't know why because you can pause the game I don't know why I'm so uh, it's like I have the sense of urgency. Uh, I'm kind of rushing through it, uh, the design and everything. But it, as a role, result, uh, everything kind of ends up being organic, but also a little sloppy, and uh, I don't know, less than a, less than pleasing to the eye. And probably, uh, if if any real, you know, architects or designers were to ever see this, they would probably murder themselves, uh, which we'll go ahead and call suicide because that's what it is, not murder. Or is it? I mean, is is suicide a subset of murder? I don't know. Well, that aside, uh, I thought we need to get bedrooms set up, obviously. So 
I figure work on the level with the stockpile and workshops, and then beneath that we'd put kind of the quarters area, and as well as a meeting area, and uh, perhaps an area for a kitchen. And uh, so we have a general dormitory area, which is for newly arrived dwarves before they have we have time to set them up proper uh, arrangements. They can crash there. And then uh, for the original founding dwarfs, the founding fathers, um, a, a bedroom apiece. So seven down here. And uh, they're kind of tiny right now. I figure we can scale that up later. Okay, and now that we've got uh, the basics designated, time to start letting these guys get to work. So we hit go, and uh, they scamper off to their to their initial uh, tasks and start cutting trees down and digging. Uh, man, uh, these miners, I don't know. They were so slow. I don't know if I picked the worst possible miners. Uh, they just seemed to take forever. I mean, it was seriously uh, probably half of the season before they got the basic rooms carved out. And I know we gave them uh, you know, a lot to do right out of the gate, but uh, man, come on, guys. Are you drunk? Oh, well, yeah, probably. And of course, right away, almost because of my superior planning skills, uh, the dwarves get, kept hitting damp stone. And uh, of course, I look, and there's I'm digging right beneath a, a pond. So my original layout... Uh, wasn't going to work. I had to adjust. Well, even the shape of the hallway, it went from being a straight line to a straight line with a little uh, crook in it. Uh, and, and not only that, of course, I had to move the planned farming area from the top down to the bottom. So when I took care of that and decided from then on to pay attention to where ponds were, set up a little area down here for our chickens to reside, a little pen for them next to the farm. It seems appropriate. Uh, we struck stone pretty early. It's one of the things I was glad about. I didn't want to have layers of soil. Uh, right now, that seems fairly useless to me. I don't know if that's really the case. There may be a good reason to have so much soil. I guess if you wanted to have a thousand farms on different layers. But we hit stone pretty early on, which will be useful because we can build, you know, doors and pretty much anything we don't want to use wood for. All right, finally, the uh, miners got some of the rooms carved out. The stockpile room finally has a large enough area to create an actual stockpile. So I went ahead and set that up, um, and I made it kind of a general stockpile for starters because I figure right now it's just a good idea to get everything indoors and kind of in a general area. And I'm thinking later we can do, I was going to do, um, you know, multiple stockpiles, each one kind of for specific type items. For right now, let's just get everything together in a pile. Uh, before long, it's time to create their food stockpile so they could store their tuna sandwiches and their macaroni and cheeses and um, put it right next to the main stockpile and turn the settings on the main stockpile to not accept food so all the food would be going to the food stockpile and no food in the everything but food stockpile. Uh, it's endlessly frustrating that at this point uh, my mining dwarf still hadn't finished carving out the initial layout. Some of this was due, I figured out later, to my own inability to designate properly. Uh, I'd, I'd left some of the areas inaccessible, but that aside, they still hadn't finished even the areas they could get to, which is frustrating because I needed to get workshops built so they could start building barrels and bins and doors and beds and things like that. And uh, but I couldn't do that until they get the rooms finished up. You know, sometimes I think dwarfs really are the worst. And why can't they make elf fortress or human fortress? That might be interesting. But on the plus side, we do have a fairly healthy uh, wood stockpile still at this point, which is nice. And really haven't chopped down uh, the vast majority of the area. I'm sure the surrounding elf populations would be proud of our sustainable wood industry. Although I'm not really sure I care what the elves think. Because of my lazy miners and the slow, tedious pace that they decided to work, most uh, or quite a few of the dwarves spent their first few nights sleeping on the floor. Uh, some were actually sleeping in the stockpile, where I assume they fell asleep uh, next to the keg of wine or dwarven ale. So finally, uh, enough room was carved out that I was able to put in a carpenter's workshop, though the mason's workshop would have to wait longer still. So apparently, uh, the, the western swamps, as it says, I guess those are these ponds over to the left, have no fish in them. I don't know how the dwarves conclusively decide that there are no fish, uh, but somehow they do, so I assume it's best not to, not to waste our efforts uh, fishing there. Uh, so because I want the carpenter, or woodmason as it were, to work uh, on tasks, uh, building furniture and things like that, bins and barrels and, and beds specifically right away, I set him so he wouldn't be hauling things. Uh, sh I'm sure if you're not paying attention, it's easy to 
turn off so many dwarves from hauling things, especially early on when you don't have an excess of dwarves so that nothing's getting toted around properly. Uh, but here I just selectively set the carpenter that way so he could take care of carpentry things. One thing I've noticed about the area already that we've embarked to is that it rains uh, quite often, which is pretty interesting. I don't think the dwarves like it. I've noticed that they'll sometimes be in a sour mood, and you'll check up on them, and they'll say they were recently in a rainstorm, and it's it's listed as red. You know, I guess it's, which is one of the negative aspects of uh, what's gone on with them recently. They don't like the rain. Uh, it's one of the things I really like about this game is that, that they actually go to the trouble to simulate weather conditions and actual fronts, cold fronts, warm fronts, humidity, things like that kind of behind the scenes. I don't know if rain has any, you know, practical implications gameplay wise. I'm sure, I assume it can flood. Uh, I'm sure things can, like ponds and rivers can dry up. Uh, so I know that's the case, but I don't know, like, I guess it affects crop growth and, uh, you know, I know it affects the, the mood of the dwarves to some extent. I don't know if some dwarf personal dwarven personalities might, you know, enjoy the rain. So far I've seen that it seems to be pretty universal in this party anyway, the ones I've checked, that they don't like being out in the rain. Although I could imagine a nice spring shower wouldn't be so bad. Uh, now that the beds are constructed and are in place, uh, I went ahead and set up the bedrooms. Uh, originally there were only three beds uh, created and uh, placed. So I, only, I set them up to be bedrooms, but they're not assigned to anyone, so anyone can use them. But uh, you know, soon enough we'll set it up so that everyone has their own specific room. I think they like that better. Um, finally, it was time to set up the mason's workshop, which is good because we can build things out of stone. Uh, we'll want to preserve our lumber for things that uh, need to be constructed out of wood. Uh, beds, and I believe chairs, and uh, things like wheelbarrows, things that uh, the dwarves use to carry things around. If they're too heavy, it'll make them slower. And uh, now that the, we're finally getting the rest of this floor plan carved out, it's time to set up the farm. This will be vitally important for uh, maintaining a food supply. We'll be able to decide here what we grow and in what season. And, um, you know, we, I think later we can even, f I see there are options for fertilizing the farm. Uh, I know we can make potash. And it's important when we get our food supply that we keep in mind that when we cook food, we don't get seeds in return for that. If we eat the raw food, we do get seeds as well as the, the nutrition. Uh, but I think cooking it gives you more nutritional value. Uh, you can feed more dwarves on, on less food. I think, and uh, I think also it improves their mood, and that perhaps is maybe the more important part uh, later on, or I guess maybe even soon, uh, but we have to keep an eye on our, our seed supply because we may need to make sure our food source is renewable as well. Uh, the farm is central to that, obviously. And then shortly thereafter, we're going to set up the chicken pen, uh, and we're going to at some point build some nesting boxes for the, or nest boxes for the chickens, so maybe they'll breed, and early on we'll will save their eggs and let them grow into actual chickens just to build up a population of, of chickens and poultry. And then uh, as soon as we get to a healthy level there, we'll start harvesting the eggs for food, which will be another important food source for us. Um, the dwarves definitely do appreciate some variety in their food and drink, actually. You can maintain a population on you know, a single food item. You can create alcohol, I think, out of plump helmets as well as, as a food source. But uh, they, I think, quickly go downhill mood-wise, and they, they become less content and are more likely to be depressed and cause other, uh, they'll start causing internal problems. So instead of just having to worry about, you know, external dangers, suddenly we'll have dwarves on the inside who are doing unpredictable things. Uh, food, you know, naturally is just one of the factors in all of this. There are a lot of other things, including the dwarves' uh, separate personalities. Um, because we want to make sure we're using our space efficiently, it's uh, important to keep a steady supply of bins and barrels so we can store food and items and our drink as well uh, compactly. And it also makes it, I think, easier for the dwarves to carry things around. If they need to carry things, for instance, to the trading post later, they can carry a, an entire bin full of things all at once instead of having to make, you know, five or ten trips back and forth to carry, you know, small pocket-sized items. And uh, I realized I'd set Squibbly to be kind of the farmer, but he was so busy. I was trying to get the farm built, and he, he wouldn't even construct the farm because he was so busy fishing because I had also designated him to be the fisherman. And he's up in the near the river, the brook, the uh, mists of what was it, mists of chaos, I believe. He's up there fishing the entire time. So I eventually had to turn his fishing task off so he, he would get to work and build the farm so we could have food uh, to eat. Although I suppose by fishing he was trying to, you know, provide food, but... Let's get that farm going. That's what I'm thinking. 
yeah, so I, the first season went okay. It was a little, things were a little slow getting started off. Uh, still figuring out a lot of things. Um, and there's, still, there's always so much to learn with the game, which is uh, one of the things that's great about it. Thanks for tuning in to Dwarf Mattress Turn 1 Season 1.